Thank you. Two words my mother taught me in childhood. The polite response to whenever someone gave a gift, extended a service, or performed an act of kindness. I wasn't particularly impressed with the words until I ventured into the first grade, when it just so happened that one day I accidentally dropped my pencil and Philip Miles, who sat across the aisle, picked it up. When I said thank you, his face lit up in a big, proud, happy grin. And after that, I dropped my pencil every day. <laughs> just so Philip could pick it up and I could say thank you and make the sun come out and shine in his smile. I love the abracadabra of the words, you know, the open sesame of their powers. I would sprinkle a thank you on some random person just to see what they would do. It was like a science project. Then one day, Philip passed me a note. I love you. Do you love me? Check the box. Yes, no, or maybe. I checked yes. It was easy to love Philip. He picked up my pencil. Service was written all over his big, wide, you're welcome smile. And as time went on and the years passed, the thank yous began to shrink from my life. And it wasn't as easy to love people for simple reasons anymore. My, I didn't feel happy in my spirit. Joy was missing. And then it occurred to me that if I wanted to have more thank yous in my life, I would have to create the opportunities for them to exist. So I practice saying thank you to the disappointment over not getting the part in that show. I train myself to see the gift and the anger in betrayal, the pain of separation and the failure of a second divorce. Two weeks before 9-11, thank you knocked me to my knees with gratitude that my son survived the car crash and that his brain injury and the subsequent seizures he suffered were a blessing over his death. And in 2005, when they closed the lid on my mother's casket, I was outdone, devastated. I knew I would never be the same again. It was the day after Thanksgiving and I could find little to be thankful for. I remember holding her hand in the hospital and my sister the other when the doctor told us there was no hope, that the ovarian cancer had spread and that it would be cruel to keep her on life support. Well, my mind froze with the news. I wasn't ready to lose my mother yet. She was my mother, my teacher, my friend. I had no concept of life without her in it. I was so angry I couldn't control the outcome that I lashed out at the doctor in blame. Is it her health insurance? Would you be saying this if, this, if she were Barbara Bush? And that's when I saw the whip of warning in the cut of my mother's eyes. Who am I to tell God that 87 years ain't enough? Her question scolded me back to childhood. My anger was suspended in disbelief and wonder over her next words. Well, doctor, I just want to thank you because y'all show sure was nice to me. Thank you? Two words my mother taught me in childhood and I watched that doctor's face change from failure to success in a heartbeat. His face reminded me of Phillips in the first grade. And then I looked at my mother like something I'd never seen before. How deep does she have to dig to elevate his bedside manner over saving her life? And then she told my sister and me to go down to the gift shop and get one of them big thank you cards. You know the funny kind. I got a lot of people to thank. But she had a list of surgeons and doctors and thank them nurses who turned me over in the middle of the night when them bed sores hurt, hurt my backside. And, and, and thank them student nurses who look like they about 12. <laughs> and thank that nurse to come in here on her midnight break to talk to me about her life. And thank that male nurse for understanding when I told him I didn't want him to give me no bath. I might be old, but I still got me some modesty. 
and thank that girl to come in here and mop the floor and tell her she gonna be a good mother. Ain't no shame in hard work. I clean people's houses for years, but tell her to go back to school and get her degree. Well, we took my mother home to hospice and she was grateful for that. People came to visit all through the day and into the night. And when she fell into a coma, they, they filled up her guest book with tear-stained love notes, thanking her for some word or deed. And eight days later, she was gone. And at the church, the people, it was overflowing with people, standing room only. My son put a poem that he had written in her casket, and we all said goodbye. The only thing I took from her modest estate was her wig and I inhaled the lingering scent of her courage every day until finally it was gone. And thankfully I had a great support system and eventually I knew I'd be okay. And then a few months later I found out that my son had fathered a daughter before the accident. And she had a mother and a sister and a brother. I was a grandmother. I was so happy I wanted to kiss the lips off the face of life and everybody in it. I couldn't wait to meet her. But there was nothing, nothing that could prepare me nine months later for the death of my son. He died without warning from a massive seizure. And when I kissed him, I, I was shocked at how cold his skin felt against my lips. And I met my granddaughter who was four, her name is Olivia. Her mother picked her up and showed her her father's face for the first and the last time. And when they closed the lid on his casket, my world went black. I died. I went to the numb of hell. And thank you disappeared with God and other childish things. I knew I needed help when I collapsed in the men's department of Macy's when I saw a mannequin wearing something he might have worn. So I joined a grief support group and I cried and I screamed and I listened and I talked for six long years until I came through the denial and the depression and the anger and acceptance and finally hope. I was alive. I wanted to live. I wanted to live for my grandkids. I wanted to live for my life. But I didn't know who I was anymore or, or where to start. So I started with those two words my mother taught me in childhood. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Grace. Yes, I, I listen to my mother. Gratitude is my only religion. Thank you, my only prayer. I want to be just like Annie Lou. I want to pick up the pencils people drop before they even hit the floor. Because I believe and thank you. And I believe that service with a smile is the possibility of love. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my mother. <laughs>